since the 1970s to get his libertarian revolution going. Charles might have started as a bookish idealist who disdained conventional politics, but at each step of the way, he had learned from his failures and moved closer to the center of power. He was disciplined and methodical. After 2012, for instance, he had systematically studied not only his own side's weaknesses, but also the other side's strengths. He's learned a lot from the Democrats, particularly about using grassroots, said the associate. For Charles, politics is another form of science, just dealing with people, not molecules. Inside the Obama White House, as the 2014 midterm elections approached, David Seamus, director of the Office of Political Strategy and Outreach, began to suspect that the Cokes had reverse-engineered the data analytics that the Obama effort used in 2012. The implications, a White House official said, were, in a word, huge. Computers had transformed the business of winning elections into a rapidly changing high-tech competition for massive amounts of voter data. Realizing that its data operation had fallen woefully behind in 2012, the Koch network took serious remedial action. Freedom Partners, as the Koch donors now referred to themselves, quietly made a multi-million dollar investment in I360, a state-of-the-art political data company, which then merged with the Koch's troubled data collection effort, Themis. Soon, the operation had hired 100 staffers and assembled detailed portraits of 250 million U.S. consumers and over 190 million active voters. Field workers for the Koch's many advocacy groups were armed with handheld devices on which they constantly updated the data. Their political operatives could then determine which voters were persuadable and bombard them with personalized communications aimed at motivating them to vote or to stay home. The Koch's development of their own data bank marked a pivotal moment in their relationship with the Republican Party. Until then, handling the voter files had been a core function of the Republican National Committee. But now the Kochs had their own rival operation, which was by many accounts easier to use and more sophisticated than that of the RNC. Several top Republican candidates started to purchase I-360's data, even though they were more expensive, because they were better. With little other choice, in 2014, the RNC struck what it called a historic deal to share data with the Kochs. But the detente was reportedly strained. By 2015, the acrimony had broken out into the open as Katie Walsh, the chief of staff at the RNC, all but accused the Kochs of usurping the Republican Party. In an extraordinary public rebuke, she told Yahoo News, I think it's very dangerous and wrong to allow a group of very strong, well-financed individuals who have no accountability to anyone to have control over who gets access to the data, when, why, and how. Michael Palmer, the president of I360, punched back, saying, We believe that a robust marketplace is a healthy way to advance past the single monopoly model that has failed the Republican Party in recent presidential elections. Having embraced the Koch's free market ideology and their right to spend unlimited money, the Republican Party was now ironically finding itself sidelined and perhaps imperiled by the rapaciousness of its own big donors. Alarmed, a source close to the RNC